Hi, I'm Jerry Mikulski. I curate Jerry's Brain, which you can go use for free at jerrysbrain.com. So anything I show you here, you can go find. I will leave links in the comments below. I would love to give you a tour of the coronavirus-related part of my brain. So I have one big brain file that I've been minding for 22 years. It has a lot of stuff in it. And we're starting here with coronavirus dashboards, which I actually realized right now I don't have connected to dashboards. So uh, let's do just dashboards. Uh, so I had a thought called dashboards, which is under measurement instruments and car parts. We won't go back there, but I just realized that. And here I've got uh, the John Hopkins University coronavirus dashboard, which uses ArcGIS. Uh, and, and anywhere you see a little icon, these little icons basically represent URLs that are connected to these thoughts. So if I click on the icon, it will launch my browser, in this case Chrome on a Mac, uh, to that website. So these are basically all links kept in context. And here comes the COVID-19 dashboard for by the Center for System Science and Engineering at Johns Hopkins which is uh, going to show us the total number of confirmed cases and a map of incidents around the world. And you can browse and you can do whatever else. And it's taking a long time to paint the screen. Uh, but I'll go back. So I have uh, coronavirus dashboards under coronavirus resource sites because there's a whole bunch of resources. Uh, these are not rank ordered. They're just alphabetic, basically. But uh, here are some friends of mine who've been creating uh, resource sites and some groups that have been crowdsourcing. Here's grassroots coronavirus resources. Here is a GitHub repository for coronavirus resources. Here is the New York Times coverage for coronavirus, which they have put outside the paywall. Uh, and uh, then also if I go back to coronavirus dashboards, I connected it sideways to tracking the spread of coronavirus because the dashboards are a good way to see what's happening. And here's a bunch of articles. Uh, this fellow here is John Byrne Murdoch, who works for the Financial Times, who has been doing those really great uh, charts that have made their way around that are a lot of people are using for talking about uh, the relative growth and uh, the tapering off the flattening of the curve on coronavirus. Uh, in country after country. Then um, I can also go, I've, I've put all of this under detecting, tracking, and treating COVID-19. Uh, uh, and here there should also be, uh, I have a thought called the medical side. So uh, realize that everything I'm showing you here is kind of a, a work in progress. I'm building this as we go and there's no formal taxonomy. I'm responding to the events and the news around coronavirus as they happen. So here's the medical side of coronavirus pandemic, uh, which ought to be connected to detecting, tracking and treating COVID. In fact, maybe I'll put these laterally so that they stand aside a little bit more. Uh, and the coronavirus is uh, basically uh, SARS-CoV-2 which is a coronavirus, and so are these others. There's human coronavirus 229E, uh, Hong Kong University 1, NL63, et cetera, et cetera. There's, in fact, a coronavirus that I just learned about today called Pacific Salmon Nidovirus, which has been uh, attacking salmon in the Pacific. Um, so this is not the only coronavirus. There are many. It turns out that this one gives us a disease called COVID-19, and this thought right here is kind of the nexus of all the information I've been putting in around this particular pandemic. And as you'll see, there's a Wikipedia page attached to this thought. And if I click here, it'll take us to the Wikipedia page for this incident, uh, which began in Wuhan. So I also call it the Wuhan coronavirus outbreak. Uh, and, you know, uh, above it, before it kind of turned into anything, are things like warnings that a pandemic would be devastating. Uh, so why didn't we listen to pandemic simulations before the coronavirus struck? Uh, and Donald Trump was warned many, many times that uh, pandemic was coming. And in the meantime, he basically gutted pandemic research and uh, uh, didn't listen to any advice well before coronavirus hit. So we were kind of naked when this thing happened. And I'm tracking uh, the president's responses to coronavirus here. And as you'll see, it's a thicket of things, right? Um, and in fact, I have that parallel to Trump's re-election campaign post-lockdown because he's holding press conferences and they're actually more like rallies than press conferences and all of this gets political pretty quickly, but I don't ignore the political here. I'm actually I'm going into it. So let's go back uh, to the other side and talk about mitigating the coronavirus outbreak. Uh, and notice that if I just type something in, I can jump through my brain through these thoughts. Every node is called a thought. 
And so mitigating is a pretty important one. I've got it under this, the top one. I have it also under generic pandemic response strategies like social distancing and so forth. Um, and if you look down here, for example, um, I, s I started trying to bubble up what are the issues. So, and I, I tried to make this thought here kind of simple. So it's cleaner than uh, the other parts that, that I've just shown you. But for example, um, I'm trying to word this as neutrally as I can. How do we balance the damage from coronavirus with the damage to the economy? And the economy is not just the US, but we're worldwide. But this is a philosophical, moral, ethical question that governments have had to make in, in, in a hurry if they actually hadn't thought ahead. Um, and this is a really big deal. So here there's room for um, other questions like, well, uh, we can't let the cure be worse than the problem itself. So uh, how about uh, herd immunity strategies or other sorts of things? Um, and here's an article by uh, philosophers, Peter Singer and Michael Plant, about when will the pan pandemic cure be worse than the disease using a quality adjusted life year analysis method. Uh, and, and here's a, I, I had already had in my brain quality adjusted life years as a measure of quality of life in medical research, trying to make ethical decisions of different kinds. So here's key issues. Um, I'm also tracking how different countries, oh, and I had it right there. Um, I'm tracking how different countries are approaching containing the coronavirus pandemic. Uh, and so, for example, in response to coronavirus, most countries are protecting employment, but the U.S. is not. Uh, the U.S. is letting companies just lay people off and go seek unemployment insurance. So we're seeing uh, tremendous spikes in, in unemployment, up to 22 million applicants last, last said uh, here. And um, that's under a thought that the U.S. is being particularly stupid about the coronavirus. Uh, and then I have uh, New York's responses to coronavirus and so forth happening here as well. Um, one of the things under mitigating the coronavirus outbreak that is more positive is resilient responses to COVID. So here you will see that people are offering to help their neighbors. There's a lot of mutual aid during the coronavirus pandemic. Here are a series of articles, uh, you know, buy gift cards to help keep small merchants in business during the pandemic, uh, offer to help your neighbors, uh, a whole series of things here. And there's a lot of articles about mutual aid networks arising, the amazing ways we are adapting locally. Uh, here is a local response group registry. Basically, it's a Google Doc that people set up to try to help. Some of these are very local, some of them are not. Here are coronavirus volunteering opportunities. There's another thought for funding opportunities if you wanted to donate to, to some of these things. Um, I have also a thought on life under lockdown uh, because we've all had to adapt. And uh, my wife and I are in Portland, Oregon. Uh, we are under, you know, mandatory self-isolation. Go outside if you need to, but don't go outside too much. And so what happens to parenting during the pandemic? What happens to kids and elders during the, co uh, the coronavirus pandemic? Uh, and there's some silver linings here too. You know, uh, lockdown is a mandatory pause, so look around. Uh, I have a thought called silver linings from the coronavirus pandemic which has things like uh, peace and quiet in urban settings during the pandemic. And here there have been some great drone videos on YouTube, uh, Berkeley and San Francisco and uh, uh, cities in Europe. Uh, and also notions that in Delhi, for example, they're taking pictures today and comparing them to the same photo at the same location on a normal day when, when pollution was very heavy. So there are some silver linings here, but people are, are um, being affected. So, um, Another piece here, if I go back up to the top thought, is what are paths to normalcy after the, 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 the shutdown? So how might we actually find our way to a normal place, to back into coming out of lockdown and back into society? Uh, so we're trying to figure out how that might work. Finally, here's the current state of the coronavirus pandemic, uh, kind of where are we right now. And I, as the pandemic shifts stages, I will change what's here. But right now, most places are or should be on lockdown to prevent coronavirus spread. So uh, social distancing will have to happen repeatedly. There's this whole idea that we have to pump the brakes. Uh, one of the essayists called it the hammer and dance. Uh, I can find that uh, article just by searching for hammer and the dance. So here's uh, different organizations' suggestions for restarting the economy. We're going to have uh, Thomas Pueyo said we're going to have to do the hammer, which is the lockdown, and then the dance, which is uh, letting go 
letting people come out, and then when things per when the when the virus perks its head back up, clamping down again, etc. I have this uh, under best articles during the COVID pandemic, um, which is an interesting place to look. So that's a tour. Uh, I'll be doing a, a, a webinar next week uh, with The Brain Company. The, the piece of software you're looking at is called The Brain at thebrain.com. I'll be doing a webinar for them where I'll do a, a shorter version of what I've done right now to show how I'm using The Brain uh, to collect resources. Uh, I thought this would be a simpler thing to put up front and I'll put a link to the webinar and the comments for this video as well. Um, as always, this is a work in progress. Uh, you can use the comments to send me resources or find me online. I'm all over you know, Twitter and, and other social media, so connect with me. And uh, I'm very happy to receive more resources to curate into this. Thanks very much.